Welcome back to Waiting in Laodicea. Today's topic is going to be the failure of the church and the repercussions. How has the church failed? Now the church, understand again, by when I say the church, I mean the body of Christ. That means that all the believers in the world. The first way we have, that we have failed is by division. Now, if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, in the very first chapter, you'll see Paul warns against divisions in the church. Let's take a look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 beginning in verse 10. From New King James Version. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Continuing in verse 14 I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Now, in a similar manner, what we have today is an example of exactly what Paul was talking about. People are saying, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a Lutheran, I'm a Baptist, I'm, I'm a Catholic. The problem in all this is we are divided. And that division allows some groups to go ahead and alter the beliefs of Christ. This divided church is ripe for the, for the use of society. Number one, they can sit there and blame Christians for the actions of some, some of the subgroups. We have organizations and churches that come up and promote such outlandish views but because they are come under the label of Christianity we all take the hit the other thing is by being so divided we've allowed society to go away from the morals and the morality that we were trying to protect we did this by failing to understand that it was not our job as the church to persecute. Now in an earlier episode I pointed out how Christianity is under is beginning to be persecuted. Have you ever looked at the history of persecution of the church? Well the history of the church in the very beginning we were we were persecuted. The Romans persecuted us persecuted us. The Jews persecuted us. And this continued on until the rise of the Holy Roman Empire, when the Emperor Constantine, I believe it was, became a Christian, suddenly it was not okay to persecute Christianity. But not long after that, Christianity began being the ones of the organization that was persecuting. This got so far and so bad with the Great Inquisition, of the Catholic Church persecuting other Christians and non-Christians. This persecution viewpoint, where it was okay to persecute those that did not believe the way we wanted them to believe, has continued on up until almost the present day. Slowly, we're losing power though. As we lose control of society, society takes what it's been taught, which is that it's okay to persecute, and comes after us. There's an old phrase, the payback. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Well, the payback is coming. Society is going to pay the church back for the way we've operated. We took verses from the Bible that tells us that certain things were wrong. And instead of meeting these actions and these people with love and trying to convince them to change their ways, we forced them to. 
we killed, we persecuted anybody who did not agree with us. This persecution went so far as we've had we've had wars fought between one side of the church and another. You don't believe that? Take a look at Ireland. Catholic versus Protestant. Why? Because payback. And now payback is going to be non-Christians versus Christians. We're being the church is being persecuted. The price for all those years of persecution. We see the examples of this almost daily. People that are losing their jobs because of their beliefs don't allow, don't accept certain things. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm going to point something out to you. There's a big difference, in my opinion, between, for example, the baker in Colorado who's being persecuted because he won't make a cake for a gay marriage or gay coming out or transitioning because that's a violation of his beliefs and the county clerk who wouldn't issue wedding licenses to gay people now what is the difference you may be asking yourself well one of those people is talking about his own personal business he wasn't hired by the city or the state or the county to perform a specific job if you can't with your conscience perform the duties that you ran for or applied for then you get another job you don't force your beliefs on other people that's the same persecution that we were talking about the county clerk she was wrong the baker he's he's not wrong because he's this is his business they come to him and let's face it they're only coming to him to per, so they can sue him anyway the church failed we did not meet people with love we met them with anger and hatred and that price is what brings us to where we are now the church is church is being mocked we have building churches being desecrated and destroyed by mobs why because they know that's the target when BLM and the Antifa went to storm Portland and Washington DC they didn't just storm government buildings they torched churches they broke down statues they attacked who their true enemy is their true enemy is God now you may be sitting back well I think black lives matter so I don't think that 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 they're out against God well number one all lives matter and I firmly believe that I believe that black lives matter Indian lives matter Chinese lives matter because God came and died for all not just for one racial group but if you're a supporter of BLM, please do yourself a favor and look into what the beliefs of your organization are. Your organization does not support a nuclear family. It does not father a does not support the idea of a mother or father raising kids, children, or not a traditional family. You're also communists or socialists, and some of the founders actually brag about how they were trained Marxists. So, you might want to look into what beliefs you're professing. Do I believe that some of what BLM is saying is correct? Yes. I do believe there is racism in the United States. I do believe there are examples where the police are heavy-handed. Hey, I believe that firmly. I know police go out. Not all of them, but some of them will go out and let that badge go to their head. And they can bully or whoever they think unlike BLM I think this goes across the spectrum I don't think that is a case of white versus black but rather blue versus everyone else and sadly it's that blue versus everyone else that gives us that thin blue line where the cops that are good cops will sit there and look the other way as bad cops
cops abuse their authority. That makes those good cops just as guilty. Now, forgive me for going into politics there. We, we as a church have failed. We meet the world not with love, but rather with hatred and anger. We try to get the government to do our job for us, of taking care of the poor and the needy. Instead of doing our job ourselves, as we were commanded to do, the other way the church has failed, it comes down to what is the goal of many of these, many of today's modern churches? Is it to bring people to the Lord and make disciples of all nations, or is it to raise money so the preacher and the elders and the people in power in the church can live a comfortable life? <clears throat> now let me clarify: Do I have a problem with a preacher getting paid? No. Do I have a problem with the church raising money? Not in the least. Do I have a problem with the church spending $7 billion on a building? Oh, big time. Christ didn't tell us to go out and make giant cathedrals to his name. The cathedral is supposed to be in here, not the building. The church is the people, not the building. Spending millions and millions of dollars on your building, why? You need it to look good? Nah, sorry, it looks so don't matter. A simple building, big enough for the needs of the church, that's all you need. Everything else is just pride. The money of the church the money the church raises should go to help support the people in the church and support and take care of the poor. And we're not seeing a lot of that. We've abdicated our responsibility to the government. We tell the government, you take care of the poor. Why? Because we don't want to. And guess what? That's one of the reasons why the church is seen as it is. We've failed. So how do we fix this? Number one, we look at our church. The group of Christians that we meet with, are we doing what we're supposed to? Are we meeting those that disagree with us with love or are we meeting them with hate? If we're meeting them with hate and anger, we need to stop this. We need to go back to the Bible, reread what it says about love thy neighbor. Christ even told us to be, even love those that are our enemies. Why? Because it heaps coals on their heads. The point is, we don't meet them with anger and hatred. We need to meet these people with love. Number two, we need to, when the church is taking care of its own, we need to take care of those that are in need. We need to bring love out and take care of those around us. But until we start doing this, we are going to pay. And the church has begun paying because we are now beginning to be persecuted. And it's becoming more acceptable to persecute the church and Christianity. The war on Christmas was just one of the first salvos. We see the persecution at all levels of society now. We have the government trying to institute and make policies that basically say that your religious beliefs should not stop you from doing what they command. Now they defend this by saying, but this is done out of the idea of being fair to everybody. We're trying to keep you from being prejudice against those that disagree with you. So we're going to force you to do what they want. No. This is the beginning of persecution. As a Christian, yeah, in many ways we've asked for this. So it's time for us to stop asking for it and start living our lives the way we should have all along. So you can't persecute somebody if you love them.
Don't believe me? Think about it. Persecution is generally done out of hatred or fear. And the world does hate us. The world does fear us. They fear our Lord. They know he's coming. What are we going to do? It's time for the church to admit its flaws and move forward. And we do this by each and every one of us changing the way we look at things. When you see a gay couple down the street, walking down the street holding hands, if your answer is to meet this with anger and hatred, you're wrong. You should, yeah, they're, they have problems. So do you. So do I. We need to meet them with love and tell them, you know, I don't agree with what you, what you're doing. But I love you. And Christ loves you. We need to bring the love to the forefront and not to the bottom of the barrel. Now, this has been, in some ways it may be a controversial episode. If you have controversies and you have disagreements with what I've had to say, please leave me a comment. If you don't want to leave me a comment because you're afraid of what others may say, email me. We can be, I can be reached at waitinginlaodicea at gmail.com. Email me. Tell me what you think. I'll be glad to tell you and listen to what you have to say. Now, other than that, if you've enjoyed this show, please click the like button. Share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe. If you want to support this ministry, you can do so through this channel. You can go through and become a patron. You can find information on Patreon in our channel description. You can go to the website, which is www.waitinginlaodicea.weebly.com. In, in our website, there are several other ways to donate and help out listed. If you'd like to donate some of your time and energy or find other ways to help us out, email us. I'll be glad to tell you things that we could use. Some of it, simple as just taking what we've said and writing it down for us. But whatever your desires are in helping, let us know how we can. Let us know and we'll work with you to try to help you. Help us. <sighs> Thank you all very much for spending some time with me. Share this with your friends. Share it with your enemies. But at least sit down, read it, study, and apply what the Bible says and see if I'm on the mark, if I'm on the mark, then let this be a blessing for you and help you live your life according to what Christ said. This has been A.T. Martinez with 